going to be presented by Shiva Lamba. He is a software developer, specialization in DevOps, machine learning, and full stack development. He is an open source enthusiast. Has been part of various programs like Google Summer of Code. He has been mentor there, and is an active community part community participant also. So let's get him on board and and let's start the event. Welcome, Shiva. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Weber, for uh, introducing me. And uh, it's really great to be presenting today at PyCon India. And uh, without wasting any further time, I'll quickly just share my screen. So this is one second. Sure, sure, please. Thank you. So I think I've already shared my screen. You can uh, put it up if, uh, yeah, all right, great. So uh, again, welcome everyone to PyCon India 2021. I'm really excited to be presenting today a talk on uh, using TensorFlow.js converter to convert Python-based machine learning models into JavaScript-based models so that you can directly use them with JavaScript. And we'll be talking today about uh, why is it necessary to do so right and what are the benefits of actually uh, converting python based models into javascript models and we'll be also seeing a small demo on the sort of the process through which you can actually do the same so i'm really excited to be presenting today uh, web have already introduced me but just a very quick introduction as well i'm shivai i've currently been a google son of code mentor with uh, organizations like tensorflow and mediapipe where i've been mentoring specifically for uh, tensorflow js and also javascript uh, uh, models uh, for mediapipe and um, i have also been an active contributor to tensorflow js and i'm currently part of the working group uh, sig and also the community outreach for asia pacific region and without wasting any further time let's get started so first, let's try to in, like introduce what exactly is a TensorFlow.js. So uh, TensorFlow.js was actually originally launched as uh, DeepLearning.js. Now, at its core, TensorFlow.js is an open source machine learning library that was released by Google in uh, 2018. And um, it's primarily um, made for being able to actually run machine learning models on web while being able to write these models in JavaScript. Now, traditionally, uh, a lot of the machine learning that we uh, used to do was primarily in Python, R, um, MATLAB. And uh, one of the biggest issues being that, uh, specifically for a lot of the web developers, uh, I mean, we know that JavaScript is sort of the language of the web. And for most of the web developers, if they had to introduce some kind of a machine learning model in their web applications. They had to either let's learn Python and or let's say collaborate with someone to actually use Python, then create a machine learning model, deploy it uh, to a server using let's say Django, Flask, frameworks, and then use that let's say with their APIs. So if they have, uh, if they were having a project that was a full stack application using JavaScript with a back end running in Node and a front end running in JavaScript, they had to use a separate server and call that as an external API. But um, what the Google team wanted to do was being able to give the ability to developers to be able to use uh, machine learning models directly in JavaScript. And that led to um, the creation of TensorFlow.js. Now it has primarily two different APIs and we'll be coming on to uh, what exactly are both of these APIs that include the core and the less and can be used to either, let's say, build uh, new models completely uh, in JavaScript or it can also be used to actually go ahead and retrain some of the existing models as well. And uh, you'll also have the ability to actually go ahead and load existing models for inference. And it uses uh, the computer CPU and GPU for both the training and the inference. And then you can also create, um, let's say, server ready uh, machine learning models with uh, active development using node bindings and the huge NPM um, uh, industry, like the huge NPM ecosystem that comes with running it in Node.js. Now, if we talk about uh, the TFJS ecosystem, so and essentially it's running the TensorFlow, which is an open source machine learning library. It's using JavaScript and also it has a lot of support for a lot of different backends, like let's say WebGL, WebAssembly, and also WebGPU. Now, of course, the biggest advantage of actually being able to run machine learning on JavaScript 
includes being able to run like basically JavaScript in all the different kind of platforms. That includes browsers, uh, servers. So servers including like let's say uh, you know support for Node.js, desktop like let's say using Electron.js, mobile devices using let's say React Native, and IoT as well, where you can actually run machine learning models on uh, IoT uh, let's say with Arduino with a Node.js based backend. And that is what makes, uh, you know, all of these versatile. And as we, you know, just discussed that even for browsers, it has support for a wide variety of browsers. Even for mobile, we also have like PWA, which are essentially progressive uh, web applications that allow you to run uh, your web-based machine, uh, web-based uh, web development uh, web applications on and be able to actually create Android, iOS, cross-platform uh, support as well. And Basically, uh, what essentially uh, TensorFlow this allows you to do is either you can run some of the pre-existing models. Now, these are basically some of the pre-trained models that come uh, pre-packaged with JavaScript or have been converted from Python using uh, one of the tools that we are going to be using today, and that is the TensorFlow.js converter. Or you can also retrain some of the existing models with transfer learning. Uh, for those who might not be knowing what exactly is transfer learning, uh, transfer learning is a process through which you can use an existing machine learning model and then uh, train it over certain data and basically it is able to understand the characteristics of that particular data and then modify the weights and modify its uh, uh, basically whatever training it does right according to the data that you're actually using and uh, or you can also use uh, models directly in javascript you can write machine learning models uh, from scratch directly in javascript as well so the one that we are going to be looking at today is basically uh, the models that can be converted from python into a javascript based format and how you can use it on a live application live working application now the next thing that uh, we're going to talk about is of course uh, the trans learning right being able to run basically um, a pre-existing model and uh, then having the ability to use this uh, kind of a pre-existing model to be able to now go ahead and uh, run it over any kind of uh, a new data like your own data so that it can sort of understand whatever is the characteristics of your data and then be able to modify itself and give the relevant uh, results or relevant predictions based on the data that you provide to it and that is what we are also going to be seeing as an example today now, uh, when we come uh, and discuss about the TensorFlow.js APIs, uh, we primarily have two different types of APIs. Now, essentially, uh, these APIs allow you to create your own machine learning models directly in JavaScript. Now, we have basically two different types of APIs. One is the layers API, which is sort of like Keras. And then we have the uh, low-level ops API that allows you to do a lot more uh, uh, things to it. For example, uh, you can uh, customize uh, the mathematics running behind, like let's say some kind of uh, uh, linear algebra that is going on behind, and that gives you a lot more customizability when it comes to creating these models. And if we just go ahead and look at the entire ecosystem, right? So at the top is sort of uh, we have the pre-trained models. Now, as we have more and more abstraction, we have the layers API that is similar to how uh, Keras has been built on top of TensorFlow, uh, where uh, TensorFlow at its core allows you to customize uh, the mathematics, customize whatever you want to have. But if you want to have more granular details, if you want to actually go ahead and convert, uh, you know, let's say even more, and you, are, you want uh, more uh, ability to actually, let's say, have more uh, freedom on being able to even define the type of, uh, you know, models and the machine learning uh, let's say um, uh, you want to define the mathematics that is going on behind the machine learning you can use the cores or the ops api uh, right and that has the ability to either run in the client side so on the client side you can run it on the browser uh, using and again the support will be through cpu wasm webgl and also recently there is a support for um, uh, web assembly as well now the other part of this would be uh, that um, we can also run it on the backend so on the server side, we are going to be essentially having, uh, you know, using uh, Node.js. And specifically for Node.js, you can either use uh, the TensorFlow CPU or the TensorFlow GPU. So what that means is that uh, basically you can run machine learning models on Node.js as well. And what that allows you to actually do is that um, 
basically uh, what this will allow you to do is that uh, you can run much more powerful or much more heavier uh, machine learning models as well and uh, that is really uh, essential uh, when you are trying to sort of you know uh, go ahead and um, uh, let's say try to run larger models because of course with the client side there is uh, this um, you could say uh, a like limitation in terms of how powerful machine learning models that you can run but of course when it comes to uh, these machine learning models and running them uh, in uh, on the back end, you get the ecosystem of all the NPM modules as well. And that is uh, sort of really essential when it comes to, you know, uh, being able to run these uh, machine learning models. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is basically, um, you know, in terms of, so if you talk about the layers API, it's similarly to how we have the Keras based models. And uh, when it comes to, let's say, uh, the uh, core API, this is where now we have the TensorFlow saved model. And uh, if you are not aware of what, what exactly is a TensorFlow saved model, it's a type, uh, whenever you're creating any kind of a TensorFlow uh, based model, you can, when you are saving it and you have, let's say, a .h5 file format, which basically consists of all the different weights that are associated with the model um, that can be converted into a, a tensorflow js equivalent uh, model using the tfjs converter that we are going to be uh, looking at right now and of course uh, if anyone has any uh, questions as well you can definitely just you know uh, ask them as we are discussing about the tensorflow js converter now coming to the next one uh, like we just if you can quickly just discuss about the core api right the core api uh, is essentially allowing you to do low level operations it can do uh, things like uh, you know being able to change whatever kind of linear zebra transformations uh, that you want to have and it basically targets the gpu either via web uh, gl or wasm and now if you talk about the layers api again it has been built on top of the core api and it just allows you to have certain high level abstractions without having to let's say uh, worry too much about uh, the um, inner uh, linear algebra or basically the mathematics that is going on behind and now if we talk finally about the tensorflow js converter right so basically the tensorflow js converter allows you to uh, basically convert pre trained tensorflow and keras based models into a web friendly format so if let's say you might be having a tensorflow based model or you might be having a keras based model right so uh, both of them uh, are being able to convert into a web friendly format we'll be seeing in a uh, in a demo shortly how you can actually go ahead and do that but um, whether you have a tensorflow based model or you're working off a keras based model that you have built in python that can be converted into a web friendly format and that format is generally in a model.json format we'll be talking about the structure of that uh, file as well very soon but essentially what uh, it does is that um, the whatever you might have whether it's like the tensorflow safe model or even let's say if you have a tensorflow uh, hub model now basically a uh, tensorflow hub if you're not aware it's an online tool where you can host your uh, machine learning models right and uh, you can directly just use a file format that is supported by the tensorflow hub as well to directly uh, convert it into a javascript based uh, model.json file that can be used to run an inference through tensorflow.js so you can use that as well to be able to run it successfully now uh, basically the different type of file formats if you sort of look at when you want to use the tensorflow.js uh, you know input format so basically the tensorflow.js converter is basically the function now it basically takes into input four different parameters the first one is the input format now what exactly is the type of input format that uh, we are going to be using whether it's like the uh, tensorflow save model or it could be a keras based model or it could be a let's say a tf uh, hub right it could be a tf hub based then what is the different types of output formats so the output format is basically uh, the tfjs either the layers uh, model or let's say the graph model so if you're using let's say that save model it will be a graph model if you're using um, basically a um, uh, keras based model it would be basically a layers model and then we can give basically the path uh, from uh, the model that we want to convert so uh, here you'll be let's say having your dot h5 file format right if you are having let's say keras based model and then you have to give the path to the final saved output and that output will basically create um, a folder which will have basically two different components one is the model.json file and the other is the shards and we'll be discussing what uh, those are really so apart from this, uh, the different kind of, uh, you know, features that are supported as I've uh, discussed is the saved model, right? That is the TensorFlow saved model. Then the HD5, uh, H5 format that is basically the Keras model, or you can also use the TensorFlow hub model as well. 
and uh, how to basically use the TFS converter? It's really simple. It's a two-step process. First, you convert your Keras X5 format or a saved uh, model format that is from TensorFlow or let's say a TensorFlow Hub module into a web-friendly format using the TFS converter. And basically, you have to use uh, this particular uh, you know uh, line or this particular function to convert it from uh, that particular Python-based model uh, to uh, the TensorFlow model. And then you can directly just load it into the browser and start running it and uh, that basically you know brings us to our demo time so without wasting any further time let me quickly share my screen where i have basically uh, you know uh, created a small demo for everyone to share so let me quickly share my screen and let's get started so i hope uh, my screen is visible so over here basically i've uh, you know used basically uh, this, uh, you know, uh, TFJS, uh, you know, IPNY uh, P file. Now, if you can uh, uh, clearly see is basically I have uh, created a simple machine learning model, uh, basically a Keras based model of the Pima Indian uh, diabetes dataset. If you're not aware of the Pima Indian diabetes uh, dataset, it's a very popular uh, dataset that is used to, you know, basically if I quickly show you uh, the different, uh, you know, uh, CSV formats. So basically, uh, essentially it can, uh, consists of different uh, parameters like the age, number of pregnancies, uh, things like um, your BMI, uh, pet, uh, the diabetes pet, pedigree function. It has basically all these parameters and the ideas that you can try to use this uh, data set to predict whether a person is going to have uh, or like what is the uh, probability or the prediction that they might uh, have uh, potentially diabetes or not. So uh, I've run a very, I've basically created this very simple IPYNB file where I'm using like uh, the basically the keras.models and keras.layers, uh, the dense layer specifically. And um, what I've done is I have first imported the data set uh, that I've, uh, you know, I just showed to you. Then what I've done is I have uh, created a very simple uh, you know, a uh, neural network model where I basically have uh, three different, uh, you know, hidden layers and I have used uh, basically the activation as uh, ReLU for my first two layers. And uh, for my third hidden layer, I've used uh, Sigmoid as the uh, layer. So once I basically uh, create the model, then I've used basically the model.compile to, you know, compile it. And uh, basically the losses function that I've used is the binary cross entropy. And the optimizers that I've used is the atom optimizer. And once I compile this model, uh, basically uh, I use the model.fit uh, to basically fit the model. And uh, the number of epochs, that is the number of uh, times that the training will take place uh, will be 150. And uh, then finally, I'll be basically, you know, uh, predicting the model and uh, I'll be predicting what's the accuracy of my model uh, over here using uh, this particular statement, using this print statement to basically evaluate on the performance by using uh, basically uh, amount of data sets. So over here, I'm converting my uh, data set into the training and my testing. And uh, basically, I'm now going ahead and, you know, basically uh, testing out my model once the model has basically trained over my uh, own data and I'm just printing my uh, basically my uh, model predictions and finally what I'm doing is that I'm saving it into a H5 uh, based uh, Keras based uh, mod, uh, you know save file and that is basically the tfjs uh, model.h file so if I run this very quickly uh, what you'll see is that you know uh, if I go down like it has already started uh, the training right it is running basically um, uh, the epochs and it will run it till uh, 150 times again the model is right now that like the neural network it's taking the input of the data set it's uh, running like basically training itself over the uh, 10 different parameters that are uh, given inside the pima data set and uh, as you can see like it basically uh, you know uh, presents me an accuracy of 75 percent and uh, i have basically uh, been able to uh, convert and uh, basically save my uh, uh, file as the tfjs uh, underscore model dot h5 file so you can directly just go ahead and uh, download this uh, for your uh, reference now, the next step is to basically use this file format and convert it into a uh, to an equivalent, uh, you know, format that is basically the TensorJS, right? And for that, what you'll need to do is uh, basically you'll have to go ahead and, uh, you know, install TensorJS. So we'll basically use a uh, pip install uh, TensorJS that will basically allow it to uh, use uh, the TensorJS and uh, basically the requirements already satisfy for me. And then finally, what we are going to be doing is that we are going to be using the TensorJS converter. Now, uh, very carefully, if you look at uh, the syntax, 
what we're doing is that uh, basically we're using the tensor to this converter, right? Like I have shown you in the slides. And the input format that we have particularly given is uh, Keras. Then uh, we give it uh, basically the path of the input, right? So essentially this uh, this being the tfj underscore model dot x5. And then we give the output uh, path of the directory that, uh, you know, it will be basically converting into. And that directory would basically be the tfj underscore model. So basically this is the directory for our, uh, you know, for basically the output that will be generated. Now, once you basically run this and it, it generates basically the folder, there are two essential files that will be converted. Now, one of the files is basically the model.json. And in this, you can see that uh, basically it shows you what's the format. For example, the format is the layers model, and then it has been generated by Keras because we had used the Keras based, uh, you know, model. And uh, it's been converted by the TensorFlow converter. Then you'll find uh, certain things like uh, you know uh, a lot more details about the model, like. You know, because since we had used a sequential based model and losses function that we had used was cross entropy. So all of that information that was defined inside of the Python uh, function, right, that can be seen now inside of the model.json file, uh, right? And now basically uh, you might be asking uh, where exactly are the weights, right? So basically the weights are uh, inside of this file called as the group one shard uh, of one. This basically has all the different uh, files, uh, right, that are necessary to have. Uh, like basically all the weights that are necessary for the, uh, you know, for the pre-trained models that we are going to be using. Now, uh, basically I've also complemented this with this very simple uh, web application as well. So basically I've uh, created this simple uh, index.html file where, uh, you know, I'm going to be uh, going ahead and, you know, creating a simple uh, form based system where I'm asking about the various parameters that are expected from this, uh, you know, machine learning model that we, are, uh, have, we have created that is a Prima um, uh, data set. Hey, and, Shiva, um, uh, uh, sorry to barge in. Can you increase the font size for the code for everyone it to be visible? Sure. Yeah. Is it visible now? Yeah. All right. Good so, yeah, basically, yeah. All right. So uh, basically what I've done is I've uh, included an app.js which will be covering very quickly, uh, very soon. And uh, over here, I've just basically created a simple uh, file format, uh, you know, form where I'm asking about the different inputs that are expected from, you know, uh, the machine learning uh, model that includes the pregnancies, uh, glucose, blood pressure, insulin, and you'll be basically inputting all of these, right? And finally, uh, we'll be basically, uh, you know, initializing our, uh, when we click on the button to basically send these as a data. Uh, I have written my, uh, you know, a function in app.js. Now, if you see over here, basically you're using an async function. Uh, why that is necessary is because whenever you load any kind of a machine learning model in uh, JavaScript, it takes some amount of time to actually load the model, right? So uh, if you try to run your uh, program without actually using an async await, uh, which basically waits for the model to load and then only execute it, then basically you run into an error. So that is why we use the const model and we use await. Now, uh, over here, what we have done is we have used tf.load layers model. That means that uh, we are basically using, uh, since it's a layer based model, right? If uh, let's say you were using uh, a, uh, like a TensorFlow one, you would have used a tf.save uh, model. Uh, since you're using Keras based model, we are using the load layers model. And over here, I have basically imported my model.json file. And uh, basically then what it does is that it uses the model.predict. And since we are using uh, tf.tensor, like basically it will predict that. Now over here, what I've done is I've taken my data and taken all the different inputs inside of my array. And then what I've done is basically I have a, a passed my data, right? This entire as an array to my uh, prediction function. And uh, what it does is that it basically predicts it. And I've used a very simple thing that what, like whatever is the prediction, if the prediction is less than 0 0.5, then it will predict it as zero. That means the person does not have the likelihood of getting uh, diabetes. And if the value uh, of the prediction will be greater than 0 0.5, because this is a binary classification problem, right? Either zero or one, uh, this is a simple logic and it will basically print it, uh, you know. And so let's say I'll uh, quickly just go ahead and showcase, you know, how it's basically running. So let me open up localhost uh, 5500. And this is where I'm running. So this is basically my web page. So let's say the number of pregnancies uh, that a woman might be having is, let's say, two. Uh, let's say their glucose level is 110. Uh, let's say their blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure is, let's say, 80. Then let's say then skin uh, thickness is, uh, let's say, measured in uh, centimeters, it's, it's two centimeters. Let's say their insulin is uh, 120. 
29. Let's say their BMI is uh, 21. And uh, the diabetes pedigree function, let's say the value for that is 2. And uh, the age, let's say the age of the person is 25. So basically, once I submit this, this entire data goes into my, you know, into my um, uh, function, right? That is uh, that has been basically defined over here inside of my JavaScript, and uh, it basically uses the model, right? It loads, it waits for the model to load, and then it renders the prediction. So if I go back, uh, you know, to basically my model uh, over here, what you'll see is um, that the probability that it gets is 0 0.17. And since I've used basically a binary classification, um, the prediction is all uh, like, you know, overall prediction is a zero. That means that the person is not really likely to uh, get diabetes. So this way, what we are seeing is that by having uh, used this, you know, like we have created a machine learning model in Python using Keras, like a standard, uh, like, you know, what someone might be doing, right? And um, with that, what we have done is that we have convert, like we have saved that model file, right, dot s file. Now, traditionally, you might have to, you know, use like, let's say Django or uh, Flask to, you know, basically host this and use this. But instead of doing that, we basically use the TFJS converter again in Python. Right, and we convert it into a uh, model.json uh, file and use it with a JavaScript function. Right, so you are able to write a complete machine learning model in Python, convert it into a format that is supported by JavaScript using TensorFlow.js converter, and use it with that. So, for example, uh, you are a primary web developer, you have a friend who is a Python developer, they can write a machine learning model for you and you can use that, right? And you can simply use these tools within that is supported by TensorFlow.js and you can use that. So basically that's pretty much it, uh, you know, uh, with the entire uh, presentation, uh, a very quick, uh, you know, uh, so you can basically connect with me on my Twitter on how to or on GitHub on Shivalama. You'll also find the code base for this entire uh, project on my GitHub. So I'll be uploading it uh, during the PyCon. So you can definitely connect with me on this ULIP as well. And you can now ask your questions. But thank you so much for attending this presentation. Thanks, Shiva. Thanks a lot for the presentation and your talk. Actually, being an ML enthusiast myself, I found this talk like real amazing. So uh, we do not have much questions from the lot, uh, but I am very like really curious to just to know how do we start with the TensorFlow JS? Like if we have uh, some resources available online or something to be looking into, so that we can pitch start our career in it. Because being an enthusiast, even I started with Python, like everyone else. We start with data analytics and then ML then DL. So yeah. just a quick question, like how do you find the online resources so that we can pitch ourselves in the career of TensorFlow JS? Absolutely. What is the best resource so, broken to? Yeah. So the possibly the best resource uh, that I'll sort of mention are two different resources. One is basically the TensorFlow.js website because TensorFlow.js, you know, uh, web, web was primarily created uh, for, you know, creative uh, web designers who did not know much about Python or machine learning. So it has support for some of these pre-trained models that uh, can directly, you, you just have to use like let's say five to six lines of JavaScript, you don't need to understand what exactly is going on behind the scenes inside of the machine learning model, right? Uh, no information needed at all. You can directly just import that particular function and just know about, okay, like, you know, model or train. That means you're training the model and then model dot predict that means you're using the predictions that's it that, that going to know right and uh basically you can go to tensorflow dot uh, org slash js to get started with some of the initial documentation and start using these uh pre-trained models now uh another uh really great resource uh that you know is going to be uh that i'll recommend to you is a book that is uh, published on uh, O'Reilly by uh, Gant Lebord. Uh, he's um, MLGD uh, and uh, WebGD of, you know, and uh, he's uh, yeah. has created this book that is present on O'Reilly for a uh, basic introduction to TensorFlow.js, which right, like, you know, starts from the most basics of what exactly are tensors, right? Because we know that tensors are these uh, huge uh, high dimensional uh, arrays, right? That store basically your values, right? And from tensors to basically how to use TensorFlow.js. So definitely recommend that, uh, you know, that particular book as well but of course um tensor this is really easy to get started in the only thing that you might uh you, you need to know is you know what is uh, javascript some basics of javascript and uh you can get started with it and the best part is that even if you're a python developer you can still write your primary you know uh entire function or your model in python and then convert it into a javascript let's say if you don't want to necessarily use a flask or django and i think one of the questions is is that tensor this converter creating a json file yes exactly yeah, 
So basically, when you use your H5 file format, or even if let's say it's a saved format or a TensorFlow Hub format, it basically when you run that command, right, it will create a folder uh, where you had given the name of your output directory, and it will have two different files, right? The two different files are basically your model.json file that has the information about the model, that has information things like whether it's a layers format or let's say what are where exactly are the weights defined, and then we basically have the shards. Right, those are essentially your weights. Right, whenever you train a machine learning model, it generates the weights. Particularly, let's say if you're having a neural network or a deep learning based model, it will generate the weights. So those weights are stored in the shards, and the model .json for uh, uh, model .json file has all the information that is necessary, uh, you know, for uh, successfully uh, basically defining the parameters uh, of the model that you have used. Right. So as you saw that basically in the uh, you know in my demo, I had uh, used loss uh, uh, lossless uh, entropy, right? And then I had basically used Adam optimizer. All of those are, uh, you know, saved into the model.json file, and you can use that directly with JavaScript. Okay. So, yeah. So let me actually go ahead and uh, share the O'Reilly book uh, yeah, sure. inside of the, uh, you know, TensorFlow this model, uh, TensorFlow based book. Sure. Uh, let me just quickly share the link of Amazon actually. So learning, it's basically called as learning tensorflow JS um, huh? by uh, oh, oh. you know so Gant. I'll yeah. I'll share it basically inside of the um, Streamyard link uh, to be shared sure. or, or and also in the hopin. So I'll just share that inside of the question answer section. Let me sure. quickly just uh, take that and use it. So uh, inside of the chat section in the stage, I'll just quickly share the link. It's pretty much uh, basically uh, the book, and you can buy it on Amazon again. Very well, like not very expensive, but definitely something to you know if you are interested in machine learning, if you are a JavaScript developer. Although you know this is a Python conference, but of course, like you know, um, you can definitely have a look at this. Um, yeah. Let's see, like if you have any other questions, uh, do we have any other questions? I think uh, we no. probably do have. I guess in the question answer section. Um, so I guess this is by Rahul, who asks a pre-trained model that takes much time to further train even on GPU. How can I reduce this time? So Rahul, basically, um, we have different types of backends that are supported in TensorFlow.js. So one of them is basically you can use your standard GPU, right? Or you can use other types of backends like WebAssembly, WebGL, right? And uh, if you try to use them, uh, basically they uh, allow you to, you know, run these native uh, codes, right? Basically, because let's say if you're talking about WebAssembly, that is basically your C++ like you know code that gets converted into WebAssembly format, and that runs. It allows you to run it natively directly in your uh, browser. So those are you know a sort of um, being used right now uh, to let's say further uh, you know. Uh, sort of uh, fast in the process. But of course, whenever you have even a pre-trained model, um, you can always try to use, of course, these different type of backends. And let's say if this is not uh, supported, then of course, you can, if you have access to your uh, main machine learning model, you can always try to optimize that further. On, let's say, because uh, JavaScript also has support for creating machine learning models directly inside of JavaScript using uh, the ops API, you can write uh, custom machine learning models in JavaScript as well. And Thank you, um, sure. okay, yeah, Abhishek. Like, I, I guess we can take one like a final question. I guess, um, that is by Abhishek. That is, isn't it easier to use Streamlit? So, basically, see, Streamlit is mainly used for uh, data science purposes, it allows you to create very small applications, but uh, in terms of the limit, like it, it is certainly limited in terms of what you can build. But because with uh, TensorJS, you have a wide variety of things that you can actually do, okay.